Of course, results are not final yet, but it looks like so far David Blair is narrowly leading uh, Mark Eldridge right now. And of course, four, year, four years ago, we saw it happen the other way around with Eldridge very closely uh, beating Blair. So, you know, can you offer your perspective on that and what do you think that's going to look like? Well, I think it's too close to call. Uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, absentee ballots out there, a lot of mail-in ballots, a lot of uh, people who were not, who have had to vote in a way that where we won't know the results for another 10 days. Uh, so it's pretty close. It it's, looks optimistic for Mr. Blair, but uh, I wouldn't go out and party yet on that, uh, on those numbers. It's, what is it, it's about 1,500, it's a little over a thousand at this point. Uh, that can change. Uh, I am sure that, that Hans is disappointed with uh, the numbers he's looking at. He's definitely out of the race. But you know, everyone has a chance to run and uh, I wouldn't call anybody a spoiler and I wouldn't draw a whole lot of conclusions uh, from this at this point. Uh, but Mr. Blair does definitely seem to be uh, in the lead. Things change in that race. So far on the at-large race, it looks like we have three incumbents at the top. And we also have former Gaithersburg council member, Lori Ann Sales, also um, leading in fourth place. And it looks like she's beating out council member Tom Hooker right now. So yeah, what do you think about that? Obviously, council member Tom Hucker is currently um, sitting on the council. Well, uh, you know, Tom, Tom's district got changed and uh, he decided to go for a different race. It shows that uh, his, old, his old district may have come out to support him, uh, but query whether the rest of the county knows that much about him. And I guess Lori did a great job. You know, what's great about this from my perspective or our perspective as women, we are gonna have a majority of women on the council. This has never happened. Six, looks like. And uh, I'm very excited uh, from that perspective. It's gonna be uh, a whole new world up in Rockville. There's always this assumption that women are all gonna vote for like feminine things, uh, that we're only gonna talk about children. And, and I'm not minimizing this, but that we're only gonna talk about schools and kids and some of the softer issues out there as compared to some of the more difficult ones like economic development, housing issues, uh, fi financial issues. And I think it's wrong to assume that women will behave as a block or will agree on everything. I, I think that's a mistake, uh, but it, it does send a signal to the community. I believe we're uh, more than 50% uh, of the population to begin with and this, you know, this sends a message, you know, we're, we're in the game. And I think that's really important. There was also this sort of controversy confusion about um, Lori Ann Sales' name being on the second page of the electronic ballot, but it looks like she's still doing pretty well. So do you think that that electronic ballot issue with <laughs> some names being on separate pages, do you think that really was an issue in the first place? Uh, well, I don't know. If I had been the candidate, uh, if I'd been Lori, I would be quite ticked off. I, it's, you think that they could, you know, adjust the print size so that voters could see all the candidates all at once. Uh, bottom line, it doesn't matter. Uh, I will say uh, at the polls, and I was working with them, we were, they made a big deal uh, of uh, poll workers to remind voters that there was a more button, there was a button on the screen if they're voting with the electronic device, which not everybody did. Remember, this only applied to people who were voting on the touchscreen uh, ballot marking device. Uh, so that's a, only a, a percentage of the overall voters who went to the polls. Uh, but everyone was told to emphasize that you had to press a button. Uh, you had to go to the next page and see the whole list of candidates before you could move on to the next context. They made a big deal of that. So if anything, perhaps Lori's name was highlighted because people had to look at it before they went on. But I would be surprised if that uh, really was a, a glitch for her. Of course, uh, uh, you know, looking backwards helps. I mean, if she had not uh, done as well as she's had done so far, uh, uh, certainly she would blame this. What I would add is I'm a little disappointed about turnout. Uh, it's always low in um, these uh, uh, gubernatorial races. It's not a presidential race, so we don't get quite the, you know, big picture hysteria that we ordinarily see in a presidential year. Uh, but gosh, uh, local elections are really important. And I do hope um, people will continue to follow this and will stay engaged for the general election. It's gonna be a, a very interesting fall uh, 
uh, certainly at the gubernatorial level. And at the um, local level, uh, this primary will decide the future of Montgomery County. So uh, it, uh, the one question mark that remains is uh, the county executive race. For the latest Montgomery County election news and information, go to mymcmedia.org and click Election 2022.